Hey guys, what's up? It's the Culture Detective here investigating your favorite movies. And today, about five, six hours ago, I left my apartment and spent $85 and as well as $38 taking the MTR all the way to Broadway Cinema Tech in Hong Kong to watch the new Hong Kong movie, Septet, The Hong Kong Story, or in Cantonese, and even though I say new Hong Kong movie, apparently this movie is actually finished in 2020, but it is only released until about a week ago in Hong Kong. So I will consider this a 2022 movie. Now, uh, yeah, the reason why I went to the cinemas to watch this movie is because A, I want to watch more Hong Kong movies. Last year, 2021, I watched four Hong Kong movies in the cinemas, which is amazing. I've never done that in my life before. And given that I am studying in LA right now, I was a little bit sad that, you know, I couldn't watch Hong Kong movies in the cinemas in Hong Kong anymore. Uh, but actually, I can because I came back to Hong Kong for the summer for one month. So why not go and watch some Hong Kong movies in the cinema in Hong Kong, which is awesome. So, uh, yeah, I found out about this movie not too long ago. And uh, apparently it is an anthology film where seven very famous, very well-known, successful directors in Hong Kong come together to make seven short films put them together into a two hour long movie called Septet. And uh, I got interested and I paid to watch this. And I have to admit, I am um, kind of disappointed, unfortunately. Now, uh, yeah, a lot of these short films here feel really empty, shallow, and sometimes even cringy and embarrassing. And despite the fact that I have great admiration for all of the filmmakers here, this movie is just, it's just kind of disappointing. I hate to admit it, I tried my best to enjoy it, but I just ended up kind of disappointed. So um, first of all, we have the short film called Lin Gong or uh, Tin Toi Lin Gong by the one and only action star action actor filmmaker stuntman Sammo Hong Hong Gumbo all the way from Buster Keaton to Tom Cruise Sammo Hong is in my opinion the king of action his action is just top notch he rivals Jackie Chan he rivals Bruce Lee he is one of the best action directors Hong Kong has to offer and so we have a Sammo Hong short film exercise and it is essentially a short film that is a bit of an autobiography where we have a bunch of uh, teenagers who have shaved their heads because they're, they're learning Kung Fu from a master and they're learning it on a rooftop in Hong Kong. So not really a rooftop, it's like the top floor of a building. Rooftop would be the English word for it, but I actually don't really know what's the actual word for it. Um, but uh, I guess rooftop makes sense. So yeah, um, this is uh, the short film. And first of all, I think it's pretty well shot. I think the camera movements and the editing is really clean. It's really nice. I mean, it's not great or anything. It's not inventive or anything, but it's soothing. It's relaxing. It's simple. It works. But uh, yeah, uh, at the end of the short film, I feel like I watched nothing. Because at the end of the day, this short film is literally about nothing other than a bunch of kids training, they mess up a little bit. The teacher of Kung Fu gets mad for a little bit and then that's it. And then at the end, Samuel Hong looks at the camera, recites a couple lines like he's about to sell you some insurance or something. So uh, yeah, it's, um, it's a bit empty, five out of 10. Then the next short film is An Ho's Headmaster, Hao Zheng. So An Ho, Ho Yuan Wat, is a legendary director in Hong Kong. If you ask me right now what is my top three favorite directors in Hong Kong, An Ho would be one of them. She is one of the most important person in Hong Kong cinematic history. He has made tons of great films. And I have recently reviewed 
Uh, last year, I reviewed Boat People, which is a film that I absolutely love. And there's also a film I watched recently called Gan, which I also really like. So obviously, Anne Hu is one of the best filmmakers in Hong Kong, full stop. And unfortunately, this short film is um, subpar. It is nothing like Anne Hu's best work at all. I feel like this short film has a lot to say, but it's not saying anything. Essentially, it is about a bunch of kids in the 1960s in a primary school and uh, their relationship with one of the teachers and the headmaster slash principal of the school and then flash forward to 2001 um it's been like 50 years now um or, or it's been 40 years now and the kids have all grown up and the principal is an old man now and um they're you know getting back together and one of the teachers had died and they pay respects to that teacher at her graveyard at her grave at her headstone yeah um i feel like it has a lot to say about childhood and nostalgia and aging but it just doesn't really reach anywhere unfortunately the camera work is fine some of the zoom ins and zoom outs feel kind of weird and unnatural that being said though i think francis Ng is easily a highlight in the short film he is great watching him act is just a delight for me he is amazing he's one of my favorite actors in hong kong but overall it's just a very plain and empty short film and not even in an artsy way just kind of plain five out of ten then the third short film is beat ye by tom gaming or uh, patrick tam's tender is the night and uh this is easily the worst short film on the entire short film movie. I have no idea what it's trying to say. Essentially, this short film is about um, a boy and a girl from secondary school. They're teenagers in the 1980s. And the girl is about to leave Hong Kong and move to Canada. Because in the 80s, a lot of Hong Kongers left and went to Canada. So the girl is about to go to Canada. And the boy's like, oh, I miss you, I love you. And the girl's like, I miss you, I love you. And they share one last night at the girl's apartment. First of all, this is a sappy, melodramatic love story, which is incredibly boring, plain, and inoffensive. It is not memorable at all. And I feel like I've watched something like this coming out from Hong Kong for a thousand times already. Another thing is, why 80s? I mean, sure, with the, you know, moving to Canada, the Canadian migration wave, I get it, it's the 80s, but aside from that aspect, there's nothing 80s about this short film. Like, you could tell the story, the same story, the exact same story in the present day, present time, and it would still make sense, it would still work. There's nothing 80s about it. And then second of all, this movie, this short film is an absolute mess. So again, it's a sappy melodramatic love story, but as it goes on, it gets messier and messier. There is a brief dream sequence in the middle of the short film that leads to nowhere. It's kind of eerie and weird and ominous, but then it literally goes nowhere. They have sex at the end of the short film, but while having sex, there's voice over the sex scene where the two main characters recite poetry, like they're drive my car or something, which is stupid as hell. At least in drive my car, they explain it. So it's not a gimmick, but in here it's just, I don't even know what it is. And the male character here, he doesn't even speak Cantonese all that well. There's obviously uh, a mishap when it, com when it comes to casting for this short film. And at the end, the cinematography, the editing, the writing, everything, it just feels like a crappy student film. It's just not very great, and the more I think about it, the more I dislike it. 3 out of 10. The fourth short film is Wu Guai by Yun Wopeng. So, uh, Homecoming by Yun Wopeng. This is a short film about an old man living alone in Hong Kong. At one point, his granddaughter is about to take the exams and has nowhere to live. So um, his granddaughter lived with him, and uh, that's before the granddaughter left and, and migrated to Canada or, or something, or the US or, or the UK, I think. Uh, yeah, I think this is a lot better than the rest of the short films in this movie. Uh, Yun Wah, who plays the main character, the, grand, the grandpa, 
He is amazing. He is easily the best element of this entire movie. He is funny, he's full of energy, and he is just fantastic. And I also like how the story deals with generation gap, you know, traditional Chinese food, steamed fish and steamed vegetables versus a McDonald's burger. And yeah, it's a little sappy, it's a little soap opera-esque, but at least the story deals with it in a very complete way, instead of just abandoning the topic halfway, like other short films do. And even though this short film is nothing special, it is heartwarming, it is endearing, and I like it. I recall watching uh, Sachiko Wong Fun last year, Time, that sort of tackle a similar plot idea, but this short film tackles it slightly better in my opinion because the story just sticks together. So uh, yeah, 7 out of 10. The next short film, or the fifth one, is Pian Dei Wong Gum by Dou Kei Feng, Johnny Toe's Bonanza. And Johnny Toe is another one of the most successful and well-known filmmakers in Hong Kong. He is really well known for his crime thrillers, his police versus criminals thrillers, election, election 2, exile, PTU, you name it. So uh, yeah, this is actually a pretty funny comedy short film. It has a lot of energy. The three main characters have a lot of chemistry in this short film. Essentially what happens is that three characters sit in a restaurant, a ta tan tang, and discuss stock prices and investing in stocks. And at first it's kind of set in the early 2000s, like 2000 or 1997 actually. And then a little bit later they come back together and it's set in the early 2000s in 2003 when SARS was going on. And um, yeah, it's fun, it's simple, it works, but I don't really know if this short film was a critique of Hong Kong culture or is it just trying to be funny? So at the end, I don't really know what's the point of this short film. And uh, even though this Ta Tan Tang restaurant is Johnny Toe's favorite restaurant apparently, this setting just feels very TVB and that's not good. I hate TVB's movies and, and TV shows lately, or, or they don't do movies, they do TV shows, but, but yeah, it's very TVB and I mean that in a bad way. But uh, still, funny, has a lot of energy, so um, can't say I hate it or anything. 6 out of 10. The sixth short film is Astray by Ringo Lam, or Mai Lo by Lam Neng Dong, and it is the most ambitious but also the messiest short film here. Now, Ringo Lam is also um, a very successful filmmaker, well known for his action packed gunfire car chases fist fights action thriller films and he passed away in late 2018 rest in peace so this is a bit of a posthumous work and um i think idea wise this short film is actually pretty great it is about a guy who had moved to the uk uh for a couple decades he came back to hong kong and he doesn't recognize hong kong anymore because so much has changed this film tackles the rapid changes of Hong Kong really well and it's something that I kind of feel as well I kind of I kind of feel that you know I kind of understand that because I left Hong Kong I went to LA and left Hong Kong for six and a half months I come back and a lot of places look different again a lot of new malls pop out a lot of old places are torn down and a lot of streets look different now I feel that but the thing is, this short film is kind of a mess because it constantly jumps from one place to another. It constantly jumps from flashbacks to flash forwards. It's all over the place. Structurally, it is a mess. And again, I just feel like this short film has a lot to say, but doesn't say these things as well as it could have. 6 out of 10. Finally, we have Sang Hak Doi Wa by Choi Hak, or uh, Choi Hark's Conversation in Depth. Um, so this is the seventh short film and the last one in this lineup. And uh, what the fuck is this? What is this? Now, I understand that Choi Hark is a bit of a goofball. It's a bit of a troll sometimes. But what the hell is this short film? This is a really weird, goofy, self-referential, self-aware type ending. So... 
throughout the whole movie, one theme that sort of strings these short films together is that they are period films and they are dramas. They're period dramas set in the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, early 2000s with uh, characters criticizing the Hong Kong society, maybe a little bit, you know, migration, Hong Kong, stuff like that. But for some reason, uh, the last short film here on this lineup is a funny SNL skit that looks like it came straight out of Black Mirror. It is a, a sort of a comedy skit where we have a doctor and a mental health patient in this mental asylum and and it's sort of this weird goofy thing full of twists and turns where the mental health patient is like I'm Ann Ho oh actually I'm Maggie Jo oh actually I'm Cho Hark himself and then the doctor turns out to be crazy as well so the doctor is like no I'm Ann Ho and then two other doctors we're in another room and they're like, no, we are Ann Ho and everybody's Ann Ho and then at the end the real Ann Ho actually shows up. I don't know what the heck is going on in this movie, in this short film. I feel like Cherry Hark is just trolling. He's just trolling Ann Ho. He's just trolling her. <laughs> like the, the entire existence of this short film is just one elaborate prank. It's 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 so head scratching. And I get it, like if it's just a funny little short film thing, okay, fine, I forgive you. But as the last short film after six dramatic period short films this just sticks out like a sore thumb it's so out of place and it's kind of embarrassing and uh yeah it's just i mean i get it it's creative it's creative i'll give it points for that but it just sticks out like a sore thumb and again Choi hark is one of the finest filmmakers in hong kong the once in a the once upon a time trilogy uh, actually, it has five movies. The Once Upon a Time movies, Blade, uh, Green Snake. I mean, dude is stacked. But uh, this is just what the heck. Uh, so, uh, yeah. Uh, really weird closer. Leaves a strange taste in, in my mouth. And I just don't really know what to say. Uh, so, uh, yeah. Um, this movie is definitely not for everyone. This is very much a film lover's movie. A Hong Kong film lover's movie. If you don't watch Hong Kong movies and if you're not a compassionate fan of Hong Kong cinema, you're just going to be extremely confused and you're just going to be super uninterested while watching the movie. I like that in this movie, they show who the director is after the short film is over. So every time I watch a short film, I'm guessing, ooh, who, who directed this? Who directed this? But still... I don't feel much after watching it. It feels like an empty, shallow film. I spent over $100 watching this movie, and I ended up not receiving anything. So, uh, yeah, that's unfortunate. 4 out of 10. I'm giving this movie overall a strong 4 out of 10. So, have you watched Septet, The Hong Kong Story? From 1 to 10, I would just rate it, like, the like, and subscribe if you want more. And thanks for watching. It just, it seems to me that 2022 doesn't have a lot of good Hong Kong movies to begin with. Because every single Hong Kong movie, whether they are released already or unreleased, uh, they all seem very weak and uninteresting. Unlike last year, which at least has a couple of interesting movies. But this year is just a wasteland for Hong Kong cinema. So, uh, rip.